Silkins. Not Silkins. To share this very special day with Jess and James. Now Mr. and Mrs. West. Yeah. I hope you'll agree that it was a very moving service. And our thanks go to Reverend Stroud and the staff of the beautiful church. I have prepared what I thought was a perfectly adequate, acceptable speech. But I made the fatal mistake asking one or two people to look over it. <laughs> <laughs> and when I got it back yesterday, there were large slaves missing. <laughs> a picture was added. <laughs> so if I appear unfamiliar with some of it, you'll know why. <laughs> the father of the bride's speech is supposed to allow a chap to speak of his love and affection for his darling daughter. Her many attributes and a long list of achievements. <laughs> and I will, of course, try and cover all of that. But if I fumble, please bear with me, because Jessica's handwriting can be difficult. <laughs> 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 it's a day full of many emotions, Fallerton and I, as we see our little girl taking on her new role as a wife to James. But we're not going to dwell upon any sense of losing a daughter. Rather, we'll take comfort in the fact we're gaining an excellent electrician. <laughs> all around good guy. <laughs> We're both immensely proud of Jess and the way in which she's grown into a confident, fiercely loyal to her friends and family, and generally undaunted by whatever task or adventure she decides to undertake. It's certainly no surprise that amongst many friends here today, two of her oldest and longest standing, Nicola and Hannah, are amongst the beautiful bridal party. You could say Ravenswood Road reunited. <laughs> Growing up on Ravenswood Road in the company of good friends and in the Ashton School community, Jess enjoyed her school life and quickly earned a reputation for being a confident, some might say bossy, <laughs> youngster. Perhaps a uh, Long-suffering brother Alex likes to do it. Agreed. <laughs> in high school, we recall the vigour with which she threw herself into the task of raising funds for her sixth form trip to Kenya with Camps International. The ingenuity she employed in finding ever more cunning ways in which to extract a few more pounds from the cause. Not being afraid to negotiate deals with the big supermarkets over a discounted price for chocolate eggs for her successful Easter egg hunt at Manuel Mir. I'm sure that other students will have boarded that place to Kenya, funded by a quick flourish of a pen in the parents' checkbook. But that's not the way that Jessica operates. Having decided on a career in teaching, she first took up on a, a gap year trip that included many faraway places with strange sounding names. The travel bug had really started to kick in. Jeff settled for a while in Thailand looking for work experience, but not in a bar in Pattaya or Koh Samui. Rather, she secured a position as an English teacher in Chiang Rai, in the north of the country, close to the Burmese Laos border, and a million miles away from so called Western civilization. The assignment was always going to be challenging, but throw in an earthquake and a military coup, and you start to see the measure of the girl. Fast forward a couple of years and during a family weekend in Van Gogh's to watch a Welsh Pink Floyd tribute band, Jess fell into easy conversation with a bright young thing from Reading who was staying in a hostel with a group of his mates having been white water rafting on the nearby River Dee. Upon discovering that their extensive travel tra trails had intertwined, it was clear that they'd got much in common. And you could have knocked me down with a feather when it was announced that he was a big fan of the Welsh Pink Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> and he would be coming to the gig with us. <laughs> <laughs> I should have been suspicious, but I asked him which, which Pink Floyd song was his favourite. <laughs> and he looked at me blankly and said, right side of the road? <laughs> <laughs> Since that fateful meeting in Clangopolis, it's been clear that James and Jess share an extraordinary bond of friendship. And though they're both incredibly hard working in their careers and their home building ambitions, they somehow seem, quite, seem to find time to race across Sri Lanka in a tuk-tuk, or explore the wonders of Costa Rica's jungles, or indeed the splendours of Snowdonia in their wonderful camper van Fern. 
nowadays always accompanied by Amber, their faithful fox red Labrador. Alison and I have both grown incredibly fond of James and admire the way that he's settled easily into life in the North. He's made many new friends, worked really hard in establishing a successful business, and most importantly, been a fabulous partner to Jess. James's parents have every right to be especially proud of an exceptional son. Now the guides say that in his speech, a father of the bride should offer some advice on marriage. <laughs> the first advice I'd give is always be very careful about what your dog eats. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's born out of recent experience. <laughs> There's also another one, and this is to James, that if you ever forget your wedding anniversary, you'll be reminded of it for the rest of your life. 